Now that you won the gold medal, what are you going to do next, old fart? I'm going to whack off! One, please. One, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty bucks. Thirty bucks for one person? That's one way to get ahead. The people with no heads get in for nothing? Hey, Siamese, you make a great hat rack. <laughs> the strangling chair. What's intercourse mean, Grandpa? Well, there's a man, and there's a woman, and one thing leads to another, and her pants fall down. And one thing leads to another, and his pants fall down. And then, oh shit. And then, is it like fucking? I hate being an Eskimo. I've had a cold my whole life. How can you be happy eating walrus for breakfast? My father says I get used to the cold. When? I'm going to build me a high-rise igloo so I can jump the fuck off.
equinibling, E-Q-U-A-N-I-B-B-L-I-N-G, spending the same amount of time on each boob. For patchy, F-A-P-A-C-H-E, a fart that sneaks up on you. Why does an asshole pass a row of empty urinals to take a leak next to you? Measure two inches from the edge of the glass and pour. Welcome aboard Sudden Death Airlines. I just changed the flight number to 1313. In case you're interested, I was last in my class in flight school. Don't believe that bullshit that the riskiest part of the flight is his drive to the airport. Not if I'm flying a plane at eight. Anyway, we're cruising at 600 miles an hour at an altitude of three inches. Have a good day. You'll go blind if you yank on your root too much, but blindness in exchange for yanking on your root is one hell of a bargain. If anyone says, here, kitty, 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 don't go. We're cats. We don't do anything we're told. Do what you're told. You end up going outside to take a dump like a dog. You want to be a dog? You want to chase after balls and sticks and shit like that instead of hanging around doing nothing? Be a general all-around pain in the ass and say no to every fucking thing.
neighbors couldn't hit that thing with a flagpole, you fucking bum you! Motherfucker's too small. Holy shit. Jesus Christ! You know you're drunk when you put your pants to bed and you hang over the chair all night. Crazy Lou Smith, killer of a hundred fans of the baseball game, was found not guilty by reason of insanity. I was sitting in the bleachers, right? Some guy hits a homer and everyone yells in my fucking ear. That shit I do not go for! It made me temporarily insane. So I get in my truck, I buy me a gun, I take a crap, and I go back to the yard just in time to unload as they're coming out of the gates. <laughs> I apologize and I have a lot of remorse. What the fuck is that? A pit bull just bit nine Achilles tendons in ten minutes to win the mailman biting championship. <laughs> if you give me any shit, you go into the fart closet. It's dog eat dog out here in the wild, fighting for your life, scrounging for food like a goddamn hobo, but there's a way out. Just hang around one house after another until some kid says, Can we keep him, mommy? That's what we pray for. That's when we put on our saddest face, because if she says yes, You'll eat out of a bowl with your name on it. You'll be a pet. A fucking pet. But whatever you do, don't bite the kid. I don't care if he laughs at your pecker. I don't care if he throws rocks at your stones. Bite the kid, you get a one-way ticket to the SPCA. Play it smart, and you'll get lifetime free room and board, and you won't have to do shit! Except on the rock. Now you can rock your constipation away with a new rocker hopper.
The human fart was the caveman's primitive form of birth control. But the animal fart actually attracted the opposite sex. For centuries, the lowly human fart was second only to the dreaded turd on man's list of things to avoid. Meanwhile, animals actually went out of their way to sniff turds. I don't understand the attraction, but these things are addictive. <laughs> Fuck it, I've sniffed my last turd. I'm going to do some meaningful work. In 1930, the human fart gained respect when Einstein admitted he got his best ideas while farting under the covers. A world record fart must have four qualities. One, it must be loud enough so everyone within 100 feet has a fair chance to get away. Two, it must have a bouquet that no one likes except the perpetrator. Three, it must continue without sputtering for at least one minute. And four, 50 witnesses must say, oh, what did you do? In the 40s, Hal Peck played for the A's with one toe missing. Nobody knew which one was the goner. In those days, nobody would mention toes around a man who didn't have them all. Today, there'll be a press conference. Come clean, Hal. Which one is it? Middle toe on the right foot. Where's the toe now? We need a picture. They threw it away. Christ, you think I carried around my wallet? Lighten up, Hal. We thought it would make a great poster. If someone gives you a horseshit painting that they did, have it showing whenever they come to visit. But as soon as they leave, just flip it back to your favorite painting. Okay, what are we going to call this? How about Smooga? S-M-O-O-G-A, Smooga. This is the worst shit in the world. You're going to call the worst shit in the world Smooga? Shit. This is shit. The word for today is schmeter. A schmeter is the distance in meters between your ass and the water in the toilet. How you doing, Goliath? God, you're big. Well, what'd you expect? I'm a giant. Asshole. I'm surprised to see you. I thought you were dead. Nah, I just played that. I was so embarrassed after being knocked down by that little piss in it. So I lived low for a while, then settled in Jersey. I figured I'd make a living selling slingshots on the boardwalk. Hey, that's really cool. You make them yourself? Yeah, but they ain't moving too good. So I've been thinking maybe I can do some aspirin commercials because I still have a headache like you won't believe. Christ, I eat aspirins like they're M&M's. They're lies and aspirin. It's a natural. Yeah, I'll tell people about this monsoon headache I got from that goddamn rock! I'll hold my head like this, then I'll eat the aspirins and say, My headache is gone! 
which is bullshit because this fucking headache ain't gone nowhere. Never buy an artificial heart for less than 10 bucks. How do you breathe out of that thing? You can't even pick it. Fucking guy is snobby. So how you been? Ah! Oh, God damn, you're strong. But you gotta loosen up. Christ. Tickle, 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 tickle. <laughs> nice talking to you. Relax, will you? Fucking guy is tight. This is a super close up of Miss America's ass. This is a super close-up of my ass. Look at this crap I took when I was at the zoo. Oh, that's a beauty, Daddy. You didn't do that all at once, did you? Well, I'll be goddamn. You think I dump new crap on top of old crap and call it one crap? You're not allowed to do that. Look at all the people taking pictures. Zoo people love to take pictures of big crap. They'll put it in their crap book and say it's theirs. Speaking of crap, I feel a whopper coming on. Get the Kodak. For underprivileged kids? Oh, hell yeah, I'd be glad to help. I'd pledge a hundred bucks. Oh, I don't mention it. <laughs> I ain't paying for them. Pissing is nothing. There's a lot of things worse than piss. Crap is the worst by far. Vomit is second, then comes pus. Pus is worse than piss, and so is snot. Then how come piss is called number one, huh? That's a joke. People can step in piss and not even know it. Step in crap and everybody says, Do you smell something? Yeah, but there's one big thing pissing has over crapping. It goes farther. <laughs> Nine fucking one one. Help, shithead, I've been shot. How many times? Five, six, what's the difference? I've been shot. The difference is you gotta be shot at least ten times or we ain't coming. I'm sorry we can't come to the phone right now, but if you leave your name and number... I'm better off crawling to the goddamn hospital. Then why don't you crawl, sissy? I have been, you fucking foul ball! Don't be so sensitive. Can't you take a joke? Have a beer. Always check under your bed for a murderer.
The second runner-up for the most annoying animal award is Ralph the Roach, who walked on 90 coffee cups at the diner. Then he was beaten to death with the Daily News. The first runner-up is Freddy the Fly, who stepped in dog shit at a picnic, then wiped his feet on 52 sandwiches. And the most annoying animal is my brother Frank. He set a world record when 900 drivers said P.U. after they ran over it. God damn, Frank, you still stink. Man didn't waste so much time hitting a golf ball, he'd be much further up the evolutionary scale. Just because I want you to close your eyes for this trick doesn't mean I can't do it with your eyes open. Alright, now close your eyes. Okay, open your eyes. A toilet seat for half-assed people. No scratching and no biting. Play fair. Pick on someone your own size, you foul ball! What do you mean? It's 11 to 1. Yeah, 11 10 pounders.
Hey, that's a penalty. You're not allowed to pee pee. Damn kids. Instead of tying a string around your finger to remind you something, put a turd in your pocket. Instead of speed bumps, square wheels. If you want to be a singer, you can bring your shower with you. How about this one? It stops a dog's dick from dragging on the ground. Spider's water. Spider's water. A gun sight so you don't miss the toilet. There's so much money in sports today, everyone's trying to take an unfair advantage. Look at this. A greedy owner actually transplanted an elephant's trunk on the nose of a racehorse. We gotta make room to stop this kind of shit. It's just a matter of time before someone breaks all touchdown records by carrying a turd under his jersey. Nobody's tough enough to tackle a man with a turd under his jersey! Does that aggravate you? <laughs> Yeah, here's your fucking cartoons. January 12th, 1944. My lousy artwork is hanging all over the place. The house looks like shit. April 5th, 1944. The only girls that like me have bad teeth or bad skin. I don't even want to look up their dresses. But I do it anyway. August 2nd, 1944. I'm learning to squeeze the F word into the middle of words. But sometimes I for fucking get. December 31st, 1944. I got laid for the first time today when my brother says teddy bears don't count. I count it anyway. See if any of these faces look familiar. Mm, no. Nope. Mm, no. Nope. Oh yeah, I seen this guy somewhere. Yeah. I know you're in there. Wanna buy a fridge? You must be joking. You think I haul this sumbitch up here just for a joke, you dumb shit? Goddamn hunk of shit.
You ain't worth a fuck. Watch me do do do. W a t c h m e d o d o d o. A men's room stall with no door. Dick Ditch, D I K D I C H. The trench that the base runner digs when sliding head first to the third base with an erection. You sit on the toilet in total humiliation, dreading the thought of using the toilet paper? You don't need toilet paper with silver poo. Take one pill after each meal and the crap comes out wrapped in tinfoil. Before I made that film about tying a string around your finger to remind you something, I tested it on a tennis partner. So we're standing side by side in the men's room taking a leak, and I said, you know I've been thinking, instead of tying a string around your finger to remind you something, just put a turn in your pocket. He started laughing so hard, I started laughing, we sprayed the wall, the floor, everything. I got the idea for the artist's sketches to catch a criminal from a real sketch in a newspaper. Christ, it was just a triangle with a couple of dots. A three-year-old could have drawn it. It wasn't worth a fuck. But the cops said they caught the criminal from the artist's sketch. They didn't get it from that fucking sketch. Who looks like that? Nobody looks like that. What a bunch of shit. I never heard of that shit. In 1983, I opened up a little theater outside of Philadelphia to show more on movies. Someone else's home movies, and they can be painfully boring. But tonight, Sheila Allen finds a Delaware Valley man whose home movies are anything but boring. If a bug crawls on your salami, don't throw it away. Shuffle it so you can't tell which slice had the bug on it. That was but one of hundreds of film shorts made and produced by Len Sella of Brumall. Films he calls moron movies, although I can't imagine why. You're drunk if you throw out the dog and you take the trash for a walk. Len says he started making comedy home movies about any and everything back in 1967. And over the years, they got so many laughs from his friends. Last October, he started showing them publicly in a room above the Lansdowne Theater on Friday and Saturday night. In the movie business, but in just about every aspect of it. I've acted and directed and shot the film. And I clean up between shows. And you've been showing those home movies to your family. Sheila Allen, Channel 10 News. He's good. Yeah, he is good. I wish him a lot. Johnny Carson people saw an article on Variety on Moron Movies, and they called me. Um, we read an article about a man in Philadelphia who makes his own movies. And apparently he would make these 8mm home movies and have them transferred to tape. And then I understand he hired a theater or started to show them in a theater in Philadelphia. Uh, these are not normal movies, you understand. Uh, they're short, kind of off-the-wall things, and this man appears, although he's not an actor. He's just a fellow who does this as a hobby. And so we sent away for a few of these, and six of what we're going to show you tonight. But to get you in the right frame of mind for these movies, let me read you a few of the titles of movies we did not select. <laughs> One was called The Advantage, uh, Advantage of Having Warts. <laughs> Another Use for Tough Meat. <laughs> And why Jello isn't a good doorstop. <laughs> uh, the fellow's name is Len Sella, C E L L A, and it became kind of a cult thing in Philadelphia. People would start going down to watch these little, as he called them, moron movies. So keep that in mind as you watch it, and here are a few little bits of moron movies from Len Sella. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Bob. <laughs> this is the five of diamonds. Wrong. I'm sorry, I meant the four of diamonds. Wrong. Is it a diamond? Wrong. Is it red? Wrong. <laughs> what I usually do now is cover my eyes. I'm not looking. I swear I'm not looking. <laughs> is it the three of spades? Way to go, Bob. <laughs> If a bug crawls on your salami, don't throw it away. Shuffle it so you can't tell which place <laughs> it's <laughs> You can make anything with glob. A ring? A lampshade? A tie clasp? And a bookmarker. Ten dog owners watch when their dogs go to the bathroom. One of the ten dogs watch when their owners go to the bathroom. <laughs> Why do you run through the wall? Didn't you see the wall? I'll pull you up by the tail, okay? <laughs> this cave is getting on my nerves. I've had a cold my whole life. Everything I wanted is a rock. <laughs> my handkerchief. My toothbrush. Even my toilet papers are wrong. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> nice. Nice to know there are people like Len Solo Ron mm -hmm. to keep things interesting. Anyway, from time to time, we'll show you a, a few more. I, how many of these has he made? 150. He's got about 150 of these. <laughs> Some of them we really can't. When my films appeared on the Carson Show, I said to the world, I told you, didn't I tell you? They didn't write. The bit about the salami actually happened. I was working on a construction, running a jackhammer. <laughs> Christ, what a job that was. At lunchtime, I bought a couple of rolls and some salami, and one time a bee landed on the salami, so I shuffled it, and I couldn't tell which one had to be on it. If there was a butt that would eliminate all the bees and beetles and beasts, I'd lean on that mother. I hate animals. I hate anything that has a bigger dick than me. Back east, start putting these little miniature motion pictures together. Some of them are 15 seconds, some of them are 30 seconds. Then he calls them moron movies. Now, Glenn Sully is not a professional entertainer. He is just a fellow. I don't know what he does actually for a living. Anybody know? Those. He's a carpenter? He what? Oh, he's a house painter. Mm. Uh, so he put these crazy little things together. And in case you, uh, let, in case you missed the last two editions, let me explain uh, some of the titles of these short, off-the-wall films. Wide World of Sport, Lamp Wrestling, <laughs> and How to Know If You're Ugly. <laughs> These are some of the titles. So we got about two and a half minutes here. If you'll watch the monitors in the studio, uh, please enjoy Len Sellers' Moron Movies. That's it. 
if we don't pull a plug in your life, should this be a vegetable? A potato. <laughs> <laughs> It's easy to quit smoking with the antagonizer lighter. I wait for until you 500 times. Has a disturbed sense of humor. No, but they're funny, aren't they? He's got a cult following now in Philadelphia. Yeah, apparently. people actually go and see these things. After that film of Snoopy was on, I got a call from a woman who said, You flush Snoopy down a toilet. And I said, No shit! Jesus Christ! Bore asking me about a stuffed animal? I never had a teddy bear. I don't fuck around with a teddy bear, I'd rather play guns. <laughs> That's what I did when I was a kid. Still do. For this piece. Yeah, a good crowd for this. We've done this a couple of times before. Um, they're called Moron Movies. And for those of you who have not seen them before, they're a little bizarre. These are homemade, short, kind of off-the-wall films made by a fellow back, I believe, from Philadelphia, Philadelphia by the name of Len Sella. And he sent us some of these, and we played some, and had great reaction. Um, I will give you some titles of films that we did not select to show you, give you an idea of, of what to prepare for. One of them is called Why Animals Should Wear Underwear, and another one is called Exercise for Fat Ears. So, with that in mind, just settle back and enjoy Lynn Sellers' Moron Movies.
Thank you. Anyway, what I'm here for, guys, is to kind of kick off a brand new segment uh, on your show. Um, this is something that you know that we... Yeah, you discovered it. Yeah. Yeah, on the kind of, yeah. These are kind of off-the-wall, miniature, I guess, motion pictures. Now, they're very brief, 15 or 20 seconds, made by a fellow in Philadelphia by the name of Len Sella. And he sent us these little films. And he's not a professional. Actually, I believe he's a, he's he's a house, house painter. Yeah. And he puts these little titles on them. And, uh, <laughs> so with that in mind, I think we're going to enjoy Len Sella's Silly Cinemas. The cheat. <laughs> How to strike out. Throw the ball up, wait till it hits the ground, and then swing. You miss it every time. The chicken comedian. <laughs> Poor man's remote control. How to discourage pickpockets. <laughs> One more here. coming out of movie theaters. I'm now working on crap number two. To all you candy asses who hate my films, bite me, will ya? And to you people who love my films, hey man, need any grass? Ha <laughs> ha!